Wow, we're in the kind of the final. Now we're getting down to the nuts and bolts, now that Judge Richardson and Judge Castanetti are here. Um, we are now going to shift into the part of the technical session where we're going to try to answer the question, what has been happening in the environmental court for the last year? And we are extraordinarily fortunate to have two of the leaders in the environmental court, part of the environmental court working group, but they also both have leadership positions here on Oahu. Um, and after Judge Richardson and Judge Castanetti, then you'll hear from our law fellows who've been working with them and with me and Justice Wilson. It's been a big collective effort on um, trying to keep the court moving and to strengthen it where possible. So uh, without further ado and without fancy titles, we're so fortunate to have Judge Richardson here with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me today um, and allowing me to get you caught up on how the environmental courts are working in the district court level. And as you can see, the district court environmental judges handle criminal cases involving violation of conservation and resource laws. And this Hawaii model um, of environmental court system, which is a term that uh, Brazil's Justice Antonio Benjamin has described our court, and it's the first of its kind in the U.S. <clears throat> um, in the first 11 months of the environmental court's existence, there were 1,615 cases with 1,670 counts of environmental law violations filed in the district courts across the state. And as you can see, they involve violations of aquatic resource, forestry and wildlife, state park, boating, and ocean recreation, aquatic resources and wildlife violations, among others. A couple of examples of the types of violations that we have been hearing, <coughs> the types of cases we've been hearing, um, uh, Many have to do with taking more than one share of ulua or papio, taking undersized he'e or octopus, taco, entering state parks um, where prohibited. Um, interestingly, people don't care if it's dangerous, they just go into the park as they wish. And um, Many of our cases, uh, let's see, going back to that slide on the numbers, the state park violations, 804 of the charges in the last 11 months have been entering or camping in a state park without a permit. And I would like to show you a vivid um, video that is Dan Dennison here. Dan helped um, put together, or maybe he just did it all by himself. <laughs> and he was kind enough to um, do a little clip for me. So here it is. And uh, you'll see how being in a park without a permit has really caused havoc. We'll air four times on Honolulu Station K5 TV. And um, again, thank Dan Dennison for helping me get this. You know, when the environmental court started, one of the things that the judges realized is that, you know, you can hear one case and then another, but if you compile all of the data from the, the district courts around the state, that's what we're doing, um, hopefully little by little, we'll, um, the, the courts will be a part of helping to educate the public. And so the judiciary is committed to continuing its efforts to assist in educating the public about preserving and protecting our natural resources. 
and to craft appropriate sentences in environmental court cases, which was um, highlighted this morning by the signing of the bill, and you're going to hear from our DOCARE, um, I'm sorry, is it DOCARE? DOCARE, John Foster, and DAR, um, David Sakota. And the judiciary is also committed to being proactive, and I want to um, just show you how this is happening. In the Fifth Circuit, they're leading the way, and uh, just want you to know that in Kauai, they have 10 active community service work sites appropriate for those convicted in environmental court cases, with approximately 50 court referrals at any given time. And since July of 2015, 708 hours of this type of community service work was processed, and that's a lot to do with um, our renegade judge on Kauai, and uh, um, I think that um, we are just going to continue to make progress, and I thank you for allowing me to speak, and now we have uh, Judge Castanetti. Thank you. 